On Monday, the economic crime bill was rushed through the Commons in an attempt to make it harder for Russian oligarchs to hide their assets. Joining me now is UK anti-corruption champion and Conservative MP John Penrose. It's good to see you, um, John Penrose. Thank you for your time. Uh, Roman Hi, Abramovich has been sanctioned by the UK government, one of seven more Russian oligarchs who have had sanctions placed on them today. Just explain how that might help stop Russia invading Ukraine. Um, well, because uh, because there's a bunch of Putin's cronies, and it now looks as though people like um, uh, Abramovich are, are part of that, link, that list, um, who've got dirty money stashed in the UK, often invested in, you know, posh London penthouse flats and those sorts of things. Um, and we can't make the sanctions really bite hard and strongly if we don't know where the cash is. You, you can't sanction something you can't see. Uh, and so the emergency legislation that's just been going through Parliament in the course of the last couple of days, as you rightly pointed out just now, um, is a way to sort of rip aside the veils of, of, of uh, anonymity um, and which stop you from seeing who owns what. And that means that we can follow the money, literally, and we can find out where it is. And it means that these, um, these, these different uh, oligarchs won't have anywhere to hide their cash. And that means, therefore, that Putin, who's effectively running a bit of a sort of a, a mafia state, frankly, in Russia, he'll find that an awful lot of his henchmen um, are suddenly a great deal poorer than they were. And th at that point, they're going to start looking at each other and going, well, has the old man lost his touch? Has he made the most terrible error of judgment? And of course, you know, we all think he has. We want to prove that to him. Um, and this is one way to get their attention and to make sure that they start to ask the question. And he has to perhaps to look over his shoulder at home as well. I'm just going to ask you the same question that I asked to your colleague, uh, Raymond Chishti. Mm -hmm. Referring to Kwasi Kwarteng's co comments yesterday in the House of Commons, he is, of course, the business secretary, he told MPs the public was willing to endure hardships in solidarity with the people of Ukraine. Now, frankly, it's easy for people who earn a lot of money, a good living, like, like we do, um, to say things like that, isn't it? But the truth is that more help is going to be needed to cushion the blow for those who simply can't afford to do that. Um, yeah, I, I think I think both those two statements are probably right at the same time. So I think people kind of get it. They do understand that this is this is kind of a sort of without wanting to sound too melodramatic. It's a bit of a battle for civilization. This is this is democracies under attack, um, and democracies in Europe under attack. So it's really close to home as well. So so people get that. We, you know, we have to stand up to this. We can't look the other way. We do have to draw a line and, uh, and say, yeah, enough is enough. You cannot do this again. You've done it in Syria. You've done it in, in, uh, in, in other bits of Ukraine in the past. Um, this has got to stop. So people get that and they're willing to be, I think, um, to, to be put to inconvenience and if necessary to make some sacrifices. But at the same time, and this is the other part of your, your question, you're quite right to make, make the point. Um, it should be up to all of us, you know, policymakers, it doesn't matter if it's in local government or central government, to try and minimise the cost of that, you know, the, the pain of that sacrifice. And so therefore, what we've got to do, it's very difficult to do things in the short term, but in the medium term, what we've got to do is to come up with things which reduce the cost of energy bills, not just for households, but actually for companies as well, because ultimately they're the ones that, that you know, employ us all, give us our jobs, give us our incomes. We've got to come up with ways to reduce those bills um, so that we are less reliant on international gas, because ultimately that's the thing that's being pushed up by what's happening in Russia and Ukraine. Uh, let's have a look at the, the options. I'm afraid it'll have to be a brief answer. Uh, you've, former Prime Minister, leader of your party, David Cameron, last night urged uh, Rishi Sunak to cut taxes to tackle the rising cost of living. Is that an option that you would favour? Um, it, it's an option, but it's really a dangerous one. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a low tax Tory. I like the idea of cutting taxes whenever anybody suggests it. But we've also got to make sure that we are a party of sound money. You can't just run up the, the nation's credit card and, and do a load of borrowing because that just puts the, the, the problem off and, and basically hands the bill to our children and to our grandchildren. So we can't just sort of, you know, borrow willy nilly. And the difficulty is that if you start moving the cost of this around from, for example, energy bills on to the tax bill or, or the other way around, all that's doing is just moving money from one pocket 
to another. It doesn't actually solve the underlying problem, which is how do we make the bills lower in the first place? That's the fundamental issue which we've all got to wrestle with. And that's the thing that you know, we're just going to have to build an awful lot more renewable energy and generation capacity in this country. That's the answer over the, over the medium term, not something you can do in a week or a day. John Penrose, I wish we had more time. Please come back soon. Thank you for your time.